It is now my great pleasure and privilege to introduce Jeffrey Smith, who is well known to most of you. Jeffrey is an indefatigable, enthusiastic, dedicated, 26-hour-a-day, uh, international best-selling author, independent filmmaker, and the leading spokesperson for on the health dangers of genetically modified organisms, or GMOs. His Institute for Responsible Technology is leading the campaign for healthier eating in America, designed to create a tipping point of consumer rejection against GMOs, forcing them out of the market. That's the goal, forcing them. Well, it's the consumers who are going to do this, right? Jeffrey is the author of Seeds of Deception and Genetic Roulette, the producer of films Hidden Danger in Kids' Meals and Your Milk on Drugs, Just Say No, a regular contributor to Huffington Post, and a favorite presenter at the Wise Traditions Conferences. So please join me in welcoming Jeffrey Smith. It's great to be here again. How many people have heard me speak in the past? Okay, so I've got to create something new now for everyone, and that's good because we have a new theme for this weekend, the politics of GMOs. And I have to say that for those of you who know me, I'm all about the tipping point. I'm all about changing the situation so that it becomes a marketing liability for companies like Monsanto to exist, at least in their current form. So I am the bearer of good news. In 10 short months, Monsanto went from being Forbes Company of the Year to one of the worst stocks of the year. <laughs> Sally, is this working? Can you try it? So uh, I could say that we can all take partial credit for this demise of Monsanto. All right. All right. Now, some other good news. I'm going to figure out how to use this, okay. According to the Nielsen survey, GMO free was the fastest growing store brand claim last year, and it's now the fifth fastest overall health and wellness claim for all products. So this is a sign, an early indicator of a tipping point. It means that we have already been making healthier non-GMO choices and the food company is responding. In fact, Supermarket News predicted at the end of last year that 2010 would see an unprecedented upsurge of consumer awareness and concern about GMOs and that is happening. The American Academy of Environmental Medicine in 2009 said every doctor should prescribe non-GMO diets to every patient, saying that GMOs are linked causally to disorders like immune system problems, reproductive problems, accelerated aging, dysfunctional regulation of cholesterol and insulin, gastrointestinal problems. And I've talked to many doctors who are prescribing non-GMO diets to everyone they see. In India, I don't know if you were there two years ago, but I had made an appeal from the stage to help me go to India. Well, I did raise some money, and I went to India, and I was filmed by a film crew, a Bollywood film crew, who released a 30-minute film called Poison on the Platter. I helped them release it in Delhi. It became the most talked about film in the country, the most important documentary in the history of India. It galvanized support against GMOs and ended up crystallizing into a national campaign to stop the introduction of genetically modified eggplant. So that was huge victory. There was so much turmoil about GMOs that the Minister of Environment had to rely on the people to give some feedback, so we set up seven listening posts, 8,000 people showed up. And one day, 100,000 people fasted against GMOs. So they really mobilized the country. Also, in the United States, the Supreme Court took the, took the case and ended up weighing in on our side, keeping alfalfa regulated and unable to be sold in the United States. Let's give a hand. <laughs> now, 
The, the uh, federal court agreed that sugar beets, like alfalfa, were approved illegally without the appropriate environmental impact statement. And so they have told the USDA, you have to take genetically modified sugar off the market until the EIS is done. So the USDA is trying to get around that by saying, well, we'll just let a little bit grow here. And they quickly started to grow some in 500 acres, saying, well, we need the seeds. And so they just went to court against our friend Center for Food Safety. And we'll see what happens in a few, in a few days or a few weeks. The Ohio governor <clears throat> tried to make it illegal for any dairy that sells their products in Ohio to say RBGH free or RBST free. That's the genetically modified bovine growth hormone which it changes the milk. It has more pus, more antibiotics, more growth hormone, and more of the cancer-promoting IGF-1. And he did not want you to know that. And we've been making incredible progress on bovine growth hormone. It's been kicked out of Walmart, Starbucks, Yoplait, Dannon, most of the dairies, and they'll list it right on the package. Well, a, an appeals court struck down the most important and draconian requirements of the Ohio lawsuit. And in of the Ohio rule and in the, inside their statement they acknowledged from a court level that there is clear differences between milk from products from cows injected with bovine growth hormone and those without so it was great precedent in the courts and that's a great victory <laughs> now in order to discuss the politics of GMOs you have to discuss the politics of Monsanto because they are the big bully on the block that's put it forward. I imagine that Monsanto, in its quieter, tender moments, asks itself, what would Darth Vader do? <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the history of Monsanto, you see the most toxic products in history. Agent Orange was, Monsanto was one of the producers there. And according to an EPA memo from Kate Jenkins in 1990, Monsanto submitted false information to the EPA, which directly resulted in weakened regulations. And their tampered research was the basis of why Vietnam veterans and their children were denied compensation. Instead of investigating Monsanto, they investigated Kate Jenkins and made her life hell. Monsanto introduced PCBs, insulation material for electrical devices, and it has spread all over the world. It is a horrible poison. They were continually poisoning the people living next to their factory, and they got convicted of outrage. What an incredible name. According to Alabama law, it requires behavior so outrageous in character and extreme in degree as to go beyond all possible bounds of decency, so as to be regarded as atrocious and utterly intolerable in civilized society. They nailed Monsanto in that. And Monsanto got fined $700 million. Now, in terms of Monsanto politics, the messiah of GMOs was Robert Shapiro. And he came from G.D. Searle, which produced aspartame. So it gives you a good idea of his background. And the person who was his boss was Donna Rumsfeld. And aspartame, how many people know about the dangers of aspartame? All right, so good. You've, we've been doing a good job. Uh, just, if you don't know, just Google aspartame symptoms and camp out for a few hours and you'll never touch aspartame again. Now, Robert Shapiro was the one that created the myth that GMOs would be good for the planet, which is why you should make Monsanto rich. And so he would write all these things. And there was a, a young man in California named Kirk Azevedo. And he was being recruited by Monsanto to be their salesperson in California. And he started reading the words of Robert Shapiro and got very excited. And on that basis, he took a position. So in the employee orientation meeting in St. Louis, he got up and told his fellow employees how excited he was and started quoting feeding the world and bettering the planet and turning fields into, into chemical producing and pharmaceutical producing uh, areas. And after the meeting, a vice president pulled him over and said, wait a minute, what Robert Shapiro says is one thing. What we do is something else. He's the front man that tells the story. We don't even know what he's talking about. We're here to make money. So this explains the inner politics, what we tell the, the world and what we really